I'm Ellis Martin, and this is Money Talk Radio. Join me now for a conversation with Terry Lynch, CEO of Power Nickel, which trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol PNPN, and in the U.S. on the OTC as PNPNF. Power Nickel is a Canadian junior exploration company focusing on developing the high-grade NISC project into Canada's first carbon-neutral nickel mine. The NISC project is located in Quebec province and is benefited by generous tax credits that cover 50% of exploration costs. A Hydro-Quebec substation across the road supplying low-carbon, inexpensive hydropower, a stable political environment with strong government and First Nation partners. It's located besides a major highway and nearby town, and there is shallow mineral depth. The NIST property comprises a significant land position with numerous high-grade intercepts. Power Nickel is focused on expanding the historical high-grade nickel copper PGE mineralization with a series of drilled programs designed to test the initial NISC discovery zone and to explore the land package for adjacent potential nickel deposits. Terry, welcome back to the program. It's been a while. Have you been? I've been great, man. Been busy as hell and everything's going good and just every day marching forward. So it's been great. Good to get back on the show. You don't stop, do you? You know what? We're like a dog with a bone, man. This is a very good bone. We're going after it. We're having fun. You know how tough it is to find it? a discovery, Alice. You've been around the game a long time. We go our entire life to get one of these babies. So it's fun to have a really responsive discovery and to have the resources to do it properly. Properly. And yeah, we're blessed and we're appreciative of blessing that the good Lord's given us. Absolutely. And in this business, you can go your entire life and maybe get something and, and maybe not, but you have, and you've been busy this summer and your summer drooling program, you got results on 10 out of 12 holes and you've, you've expanded the high grade polymetallic lion zone at NIST by 50%. Terry, tell us all about it. It's pretty exciting. This summer we had two objectives. One was to expand the lion zone, which we've done with these 12 holes. I think we ended up with 13 in the midst of the 14th. And I think we were 11 for 13. So that was following off the 15 for 16 run over the winter. It's been a very responsive zone. Probably half of those have been like similar to the winter zone where we had like some of them were in the deep core of the project where we're running five to 10 meters of massive calcopyrite and we're getting like 10 meters of 10% copper equivalent assays, like just unbelievable stuff. So, so I think more of that's coming. Obviously you don't know until you get the assays with this type of rock, it's fairly visible. So we're expect to get those out starting at the end of September. So that's exciting. The other thing we did, Ellis, is that we have more of a long-term view about how big this potentially could be and what's the best way to go at that. So one of the Probably as important as it was for us to have raised the 20 million we did with Robert Friedman and Rob McEwen and all those great, smart mining investors was we were able to get Dr. Steve Beresford in to be our board member and senior technical advisor on this. And his background, in case you're not aware of it, he was chief geo at First Quantum, and then it went to MMG and then IGO as chief scientific officer. So he's been in the business for, I don't know, 40 plus years. He's probably spent more money exploring for polymetallic deposits than any man alive and arguably the top mind in that space, or he's certainly in that conversation. So those guys learn tricks to the trade that honestly, our guys did a great job finding the line zone and, and expanding it, but turning this into a successful, huge polymetallic deposit, you need to have that veteran hand that can guide you to, especially if you're a small guy like we are, you need to spend your money efficiently. And Steve's got some tactics about that. He had some research programs we did this summer. We drilled 4,000 meter holes, basically in barren rock, parallel the structure to run down holy end. Because he says the key to successful polymetallic exploration is to find these rich shoots that we've found, and he thinks there'll be others of them. And the best way to find them is through the gravity and down holy end that we did this summer. So we've done that, and we're gathering that data. And that'll guide the 30,000 meter program we've got coming up starting October 15th till the end of April. Super exciting to expand the zone, and equally as exciting to set the stage for the next big surge of growth, we think, for the project. You're certainly the story in the nickel space, and nickel's not going away along with copper. We expect more and more of it to be used all the time as we continue the electrification of the planet. Yeah, I think the cool thing about one of the things that nickel has been a bit of a four-letter word because of the Indonesian nickel influx and the Russian dumping with the war efforts and stuff like that. But the reality is North American nickel, especially high grade, is a different animal and that's good. And then the other thing that we've been very pleasantly surprised is that we went from being a nickel sulfide project to being a polymetallic deposit. So we're expecting revenue-wise to be a third nickel, a third copper, and a third noble metal, so gold and silver. Silver and the PGE group. So that diversified us a lot. And, and, and polymetallic deposits are literally the world's most valuable. So we've been blessed to be able to move that way. And of course, that makes the cost of recovering the nickel super competitive. So it doesn't really matter what the Indonesians do. We'll produce nickel profitably. 
Can we call it clean nickel, especially considering where the jurisdiction is in Quebec, where you've got all this hydro energy. So ultimately when you become a mine, when the company becomes a mine, whatever iteration that looks like, you're clean compared to, like you mentioned, Russia. And yeah. Europe. We've got a slide in our deck that we basically say one of our objectives is to be the world's first carbon neutral polymetallic mine. And I think that we've got a real shot at that. Obviously, a lot of it is just the happenstance of birth. We found this project literally across the street from Hydro-Quebec substation. So that helps. And then it's a ultramafic deposit, which naturally sequesters CO2. So that's good too. And then we've been working with a company called CVMR on the feasibility study for the nickel sulfide side of the project. And that'll be out in a few weeks. Literally the world's cleanest way to make nickel is three ways to make nickel. You can smelt it. You can use hydrometallurgy or you can use chemical metal vapor process, which is what they do. And that uses no extra external air, no external water, and it's quite clean, so very low CO2. And, and they also have a recycle process that they could add onto our mine plan that on a GV that would potentially do with them. And that would take in any battery, lithium ion or NMA, NMC, break them down to the component parts, put them back to work. So we'll go cradle grave in this thing. So that certainly makes it attractive. People say benchmark, would McKenzie say that'll get you higher prices for your nickel? I like to think that, but even if it doesn't, what it does get us is our preferred offtake partners and very good terms. So there's a big win for being clean and we're going to have that at Power Nickel. Are you talking to some of those end users already? Yes. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Several conversations are happening as we speak. It's because we're on the people's radar. One of the things, I just came back from Beaver Creek. I would say one of my biggest surprises was how many meetings we had with industry people who were quite keen to understand the project, invest in the project. And it was like, wow, that was like a difference from another year. So it's, yeah, because I think this, they, they can see this potentially being world-class which is when you talk with the big boys, that's what they want. They don't want a small deposit. They're looking for something they think has got scale. So it was quite encouraging. And uh, yeah, so that's happening now for sure. And you increased your position in the company. You bought some more shares, didn't you? Yeah, we've been, I started in, obviously had a position, but in September of 2020, when we acquired the project or just shortly thereafter, I started layering in and we've put a fresh, myself and the family, four and a half million in over the last two years two and a half years. And uh, yeah, I think it's still a compelling buy. You're basically, if you look at the market, we're trading at or around when, where McEwen and Friedland and mining funds bought in the last round. Summer was soft and now we're back into our news cycle. And generally speaking, I find, and you may have your own perspective on this, but I find that I like to get in deals that have money and have catalysts coming. Because that's generally when, if the catalysts work out, stocks will run. Whenever you need money, stocks never move and we don't need money. So we're good for money, which is unusual in this space. And we're blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But we're a good way. We've got lots of catalysts coming and it should be an exciting fall, winter season. So I imagine there's going to be a good amount of news flow. You and I will be talking again soon. That's the plan. I think those uh, first assays will definitely get back on the blower here and, and tell people what that means and how they should be viewing it and presage the next set of assays. I think we're going to go from strength to strength there. Terry, it's always great to catch up with you. I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today on the program. Okay. Cheers for now. Thanks. I've been speaking with Terry Lynch, CEO of Power Nickel, which trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol PNPN and in the U.S. on the OTC as PNPNF. Get the complete story by going to powernickel.com. Subscribe to Money Talk Radio and the Ellis Martin Report. It's free. Go to ellismartin.com.